Hello, welcome. We are going to cover this problem about cicadas. I would pause the video and give it a shot on your own. Read it, try it for a couple of minutes, then press play when you're ready to work on it with me. All right, so, so in this problem, we have these cicadas and they are emerging from the ground. And in part one, we have one type of cicada that emerges every 12 years. So they come out of the ground every 12 years and we wanna know when will they face their predators. Well, in this problem, they're telling us that the predators come out of the ground every two years. So if we think about what this is saying, it's that at least this is a cool problem because we have to say, well, what if a lot? And I'll, you'll understand that in a minute. But here, we're, we're starting this problem off by assuming it's a problem about multiples. In other words, do 12-year cycles and two-year cycles meet up all the time, sometimes, never? What's going to happen? Well, I made this little grid right here so we can look at a century. And if I circle every 12 years, these would be the years that this, these cicadas are emerging from the ground. And um, you might know your multiples of two, but I'm going to show you the multiples of two. Every two years, the predators are coming out of the ground. So if we count up by twos, we'll quickly start to notice that the predators are always there to meet the cicadas. So our first answer would, would just be, okay, the predators are always there for the 12-year cicadas. And that's clearly not good, right? At least that's that's where I started this problem. I was like, oh, isn't that obvious? Uh, every two years, right? Two goes into every multiple of 12, so they're always going to be there. But I totally missed uh, that we don't know when the predators are emerging from the ground. And what I mean is we don't know if they started here. Like, were the predators actually around after two years? When did they first start? Because if they started two right here and go every other year, they'll always be there for the cicadas. But imagine, I'm going to draw this in pink, imagine the predators really started on year one. We don't know really when they started. But if they start on year one and they appear every other year, then we see that, oh, the predators will never be there to meet the cicadas. Because if you're going up by twos and you're starting on the first year in a sequence, right, you're always going to be stuck on the odd numbers because every other number is odd. So it's then you're, you're saying, oh, well, it depends on your luck because if the cicadas are coming out every 12 years and the predators are coming out every other year but starting on an odd year, they'll never, ever meet the cicadas. So if I was analyzing this question, that would be the first couple of things I write down. I would say, well, it depends. What if, right, there's that what if, what if the predators come out on the first year or, or what if they come out on an odd year and they'll never be there for them and the cicadas are safe, but if they come out on an even year, they'll always be there to meet them. Well, then we look at the 13-year the cicadas and I'll circle those in green. The multiples of 13 are 13, 26, 39, 52, I to think there for a second, 65, 78, and then 78, and we can, you know, you can look at the pattern here to figure out where these multiples will be, um, but I'm just going to add. So 78 plus 10 is 88, plus 3 is 91, right? Where's 91? There you go, 91. And then plus 13 then goes goes over um, 100. So these are the 13, um, the 13 year cicadas. And the color might be a little bit hard to see, but let me just emphasize that the first time the cicadas come out, um, they would meet the pink predators that come out on the odd dates. But the next time, if if the predator comes out on the odd year, right, they'll meet them on 13, 39, all the odd numbers, 65, and 91. All those years where the 13 year cicadas emerge, you can see the little pink is underlined. So if the predators come out on, a, on the first year, on an odd year, they'll be there to meet the cicadas every other year. But if the predators come out on an even year, right, on twos, you can see that every even emergence of cicadas, um, 26, 52, 78, uh, and all those times, the predators are there to meet them. And that would be uh, one, two, three times. The odd, of course, would meet one, two, three, four times. So it's a little bit worse for the cicadas, the 13-year cicadas, if the predators emerge on odd years every other year. And it's a little bit better for them if the predators emerge on the even years. There's one less cycle within every century where the predators are there to meet them. 
But the and the explanation here is complicated. Um, it, it really depends. You don't know when the predators are coming out, right? And I, that, that would be my answer. I would explain all of that. I would say, well, it really depends. What if the predators are coming out on odd years? Because if the predators come out on an odd year, and cicadas come out every 12 years, it's much better to be a 12-year cicada. However, if the uh, predators come out on even years, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, it's much worse to be the 12-year cicada. The 13-year cicada faces predators every other time they emerge, regardless of when the predators come out. And so you don't necessarily have to say which one would be safer, uh, but you do have to say, if you're analyzing this, what some of the pros and cons are of being one type of cicada or the other. Now in part two, uh, we have the situation where predators, uh, there are two types of predators, one with a two-year cycle and one with a three-year cycle. And they want to know if the cicadas and predators came up this year. So they're all starting on the same year. That's what you know. Um, when would the 12 and 13 year cicadas have to face uh, these predators? It should be 12 year, oops. When would the 12 year and 13 year cicadas have to face these predators? Do they ever have to face them both? Um, if so, when would this happen? Are either type better off than the other? How do you know? So this is a similar question, except we know a couple of different things. We know that the uh, cicadas all have emerged this year. And looking forward, we know that the predators come out every two years, and another type of predators come out every three years. So to analyze this question, I'm just going to add one number to my grid, year zero. All right? This is where we are. This is the year where they emerge. This is the starting point. So that would mean that, let's look at our 12-year cicadas. Our 12-year cicadas, again, are multiple to 12, 12, 24. 36, 48, and I'll do one more, 60. Well, maybe I'll do them all. 70, 72, 84, 96. 13-year cicadas, right? Sorry, 13, then 2 above multiple 24, then 3 above multiple 12 of 24, and so on and so forth. 52, 65, 78, 90, what was it, 91, right? So... These are all the cicadas that are emerging. Notice they're never emerging at the same time within, within this 100 years, right? That'll happen further on when you're dealing with 12 times 13, right? So they won't meet at 12 times 13 until 12 times 13 um, years. If we just figure that real quick, it's 6, 3, 2, 1. So it'll be 156 years before um, you have a multiple of 12 and 13. In that year, both cicadas emerge, right? So we're not to deal with that yet. Now, but the but the two and the three years, let's look at those. So we have our two years, right? So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, right? So they're going to meet them there, and then we'll just keep going with this. It's a little hard to see. Right? Sorry. Okay, so all these red lines that I just drew are the two-year cicadas. Now let's do the same thing with the three-year cicadas. I'm just going to switch to uh, something that contrasts a little bit more. Uh, I had pink in the last time. I'll write in pink, but I'll write for every third year. I'll write um, on the top. Now, I might not make sense here, but I just want you to see the visual of when the two predators, pink and red, uh, meet at the same time. So I'm going to do that really quick. I'm going to uh, underline all the multiples of three. So then I'm going to fast forward this because I don't want you to watch it. Okay, so I just went through all the multiples of two and three, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle all the times we have both predators. So I see that on 12 here, we, the cicadas um, face both types of predators, specifically the 12-year cicadas. So I'm gonna keep a tally of this. So we have our 12-year cicadas, right? I'm gonna tally up, that doesn't look very neat, let me fix that. Our 12-year cicadas and our 13-year cicadas um, We'll do, we'll do the 13 year cicadas in a different color. We'll do it in blue. Um, we'll mark when they face two predators. So, so far, the 12 year cicadas face both here. The next time that happens, I see is here at 24. All right, the 12 year cicadas face both predators. And at 36, they face both predators. And at 48, it's not looking so good, is it? 
40, they face bulk predators. And at 60, they face bulk predators. I think you see that um, every time, right, every time the 12 year cicadas emerge, they actually face both predators. It's bad news for them, right? So 84 and 96. And you want to think about why this is, right? Why does it make sense that the 12 year cicadas uh, would always be facing both predators? And that, you know, if we think about multiples of two and three, right, um, and how they work, multiples of two and three, the LCM of two and three is what? Well, it's six, right? They first meet at six. And the multiples of two and three, they all have common factors in all the multiples of six as well. So six, 12, 18, 20, uh, 24, and so on. So two and three, every time they meet, it's a multiple of six. And all multiples of six include multiples of 12, right? Because six is a factor of 12. So it makes sense that two and three will meet at all the multiples of 12 because they all divide equally into six. Now the 13 year cicadas here have a little bit better. And I think, let's look at that. So here's the first multiple of 13. They don't face any predators, yay. I keep going, 26. Oh, they face a predator. So they don't face both predators, they face one type of predator. So I don't know what to put as a tally for that. They don't seem to face both predators, but I'll make a special note over here. This is for one type of predator not both. This will be over here for both types of predators. Both predators, one type of predator. So here, uh, it seems that at 26, excuse me, at 26, the 13-year cicada faces one type of predator. At 39, they face the other type of predator. At, what's my next one? I think, I think green. Oh, silly me. I should have done green here too. I'm using green for, sorry about that, I'm using green for the 13-year cicadas. I should be using green here as well. So all the green lines are the 13-year cicadas. And I noticed that at 13, they don't face either type of predator because 2 and 3, right, um, don't, are not factors of 13. The multiples of 2 and 3 don't hit 13. 13 is a prime number. 26, however, is even, so 2 will go into it. So at least one type of predator meets them. 39 is a multiple of 3, right? So 3 times 13 is 39. So the other type of predator will meet them there. And then 52. Where is 52? Here it is. Um, 52, they face another type of predator. And uh, at 65, right, they don't face any type of predator. At 78, they face both types of predators. So they finally meet both. And here is because 78 is a multiple of both 2 and 3, right? It's the first time that happens. So moving on, we have 78, and then we go to our next number, which of course is 91, and they're in the clear. They don't meet anyone. And you can see that there's several times that they don't meet any predators. There is one time when they meet both, and three times when they meet one type of predator. So it's much safer to be a 13-year cicada because of the way multiples of 13 work. Right, twos and threes don't go into every multiple of 13, but they do meet them at some locations. All right, well, there's a lot to think about here. Um, I think we did a good job analyzing this question. If you want to go further and make it a little bit trickier in part two, try to consider different starting points of the predators, right? Because in part two, they all meet at the same time, and that makes this problem more manageable, but life, mathematics, and life are not always so manageable. So play with those variables a little bit to see what you get.